Folks, Canadian Prepper here. Just going to share my EDC with you today. This uh, everyday carry setup is geared towards Canadian climates uh, with the cold weather, of course, and it's also taking into consideration the restrictions on personal protective equipment that Canadians can utilize. So obviously concealed carry is out of the question here in this country. And so we have to resort to other ways to defend ourselves, more creative ways, if you will. And there are ways to do it. And actually you can, uh, you can have a variety of different uh, self-defense tools at your disposal legally. Of course, using them, you know, probably opens up a lot of doors. Uh, but then again, you know, it's better than dying, I suppose, or being permanently injured. So I'm just going to start from the right side, from the most practical, perhaps to the most tactical. And so from the right side here, we have some traction gear. So these are something you would just keep in your bag. And I should mention that everything on this side of the fence is stuff that I don't keep on my person per se. I keep it in a everyday carry backpack slash carry bag type thing. And so I do have uh, a video that I did on traction devices. So I will post the link here. And these are just really cheap ones you can get at Walmart. As I've demonstrated before, there are far more higher end, high quality versions you can get for you know, more intense sort of endeavors. But these will definitely work and they can come in handy for a variety of reasons. Pushing people out of, you know, in Canada, there's a lot of snow. So, and of course, the United States apparently also, uh, you know, if people are getting stuck in the snow and stuff like that, or if your car gets, uh, if your car won't start, or if you get stranded somewhere and you have to walk and it's icy, you know, these things can make all the difference. Even if you're, especially if you get stuck somewhere, you know, when it's a bad end of town or something like that, and you have this uh, traction advantage over most people who probably won't, this could mean, uh, give you a huge advantage in any sort of altercation. Foot warmers and hand warmers, these could be lifesavers, literally. If your feet and your hands, you know, those are usually the things that get choked out first to the heat, the body tries to protect the core. So, your finer motor skills are impacted and especially if you have to walk long distances foot warmers can make a huge difference huge difference now obviously gloves and a toque are pretty obvious things for most Canadians but this uh, toque in particular in these gloves the reason why I like them is that you can pretty much uh, stuff them into your pocket and unlike a lot of those pansy gloves that you see and pansy skull caps that you see this one actually has the Columbia What's it called again? Omni heat technology. So it's sort of like a space blanket. It reflects your heat. And on the other side, of course, on the outside, it's just a black toque. And uh, I don't want to give their logo too much airplay. But, uh, you know, it is uh, a really good toque. And probably one of the best toques I've ever used. One of the warmest toques, in spite of its very thin form. Very warm. Uh, the gloves also have that. Omni heat stuff. They aren't as effective as the toque, mind you. You know, I mean, your your hands don't give off a lot of heat, so that's probably why. And the Omni heat's only on the back part of it; it's not in the front part of it, which would make it more effective. Even if it is on the uh, about eighty percent of the fingers, it's still you know still not that effective, but far better than those other little chintzy gloves you can buy. So definitely the best, thinnest, warmest uh, glove package that you can get, as far as I know. Uh, that in combination with these should uh, do you well. I got the Trent Power Pack Extreme. I know uh, the Prepared Mind 101 was dissing new Trent recently in his most recent video. And, uh, you know, fair enough. He, uh, oops, he had a bad experience with it. But uh, I haven't had any experience with it, and that's the beauty of this thing. It's shockproof, crushproof, waterproof. I've done a sort of half review on it when I reviewed the, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, solar panels, the power film solar panels. And it's a good power outlet. They got a variety of ruggedized power packs like this. This one is 12,000 milliamps, so definitely charge your cell phone three or four times depending on how big it is uh, just a little mini first aid kit got from some 
Toying Company. Uh, some hand sanitizer, which can be good. I do work in healthcare, so that's a uh, useful tool for that aspect. I do have my Ultimate Survival belt, which I do wear every day in here, of course. Handcuff key, which has yet to fall out, and I've been wearing this thing for pretty much ever since I made it. And you can watch the video on this. I will post the video link. Uh, it's got everything in there from freaking saws to flashlights to knives to matches you know if I ever really you know wound up from the city into some real sort of rural environment you know that would uh, probably take me pretty far and of course a hundred feet of paracord not counting the paracord on my keychain so combined I got about 110 120 feet of paracord now you know an EDC obviously is for the purpose of urban everyday carry so I don't confuse this with a survival kit but you know particularly in winter uh, survival you know in an urban environment depending on how long you or how far you have to commute can you know mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people so you know for some people you know if you're commuting long distances after work at night early in the morning when there's not a lot of people on the road that can be a small scale shit hits fan situation now coming over here to the on-person carry stuff, uh, I got my little bird knife, which is tiny little knife, a uh, twenty twenty-five dollar knife, and uh, nice and sharp, you know, locking. It's got the one uh, one-handed open, you know, which is it's a little tough depending on how big your hands are, but you know it it, it works, and uh, you know I mean if you ever needed to heaven forbid you could use it as a little bit of a shiv but uh you know it's uh, it's got this stupid little bathtub ring thing on it that i'm probably going to take off but uh fits nicely in a change pocket and uh it works it works this is the night ties keychain i do keep my keys on here i don't post them because i don't want anybody who's proficient at key cutting to copy them and you know do that sort of thing so Paracord lanyard that I probably had on there for coming on four years now. That's some, you know, miscellaneous rings there so I can fling it around and whatnot. Anyways, that's redundant. The night ties, I can't remember what this is called. I'm going to post a link to it, but this is a great device. I, I just can't say enough about it. It's very cheap, actually. It only costs about 10 bucks. These little locking mechanisms are pretty cool. So what happens here little pill canister keep some Tylenol or caffeine pill or something like that in you can lock it in place so that's not gonna come off this thing actually comes with these that don't have the locking things you have to buy these locking things separate but all in all it's about a $15 kit in total so works great doesn't get tangled up you know and it's just a nice setup and you know, with this lanyard on, I it's accessing my keys in my pocket is easy. So that works pretty good. Uh, so in terms of self-defense, actually, one more thing that would go over on this side is the lock lube and de-icer. So this can be a lifesaver if you're ever, you know, if your lock ever gets frozen or something like that. So and just you know having grease on you in general could uh, could help things. So something to consider also now getting over to the more personal protective gear got the Gerber impromptu tactical pen yes we can't conceal conceal carry firearms but we can conceal carry badass tactical pens so this one has a integrated glass breaker tool it's made of stainless steel it's got a lot of weight to it would make an effective kubaton uh, definitely you know that glass breaker would also be a good piercing device and you know I mean that's pretty much it like you're not getting a whole lot more than that you know you're getting uh, you know a nice pen which writes in zero gravity not that you'd ever really need to do that but uh, you know if you ever find yourself needing to write upside down in a tactical situation then hey you know that's awesome you're you're covered there Kerber Tactical Impromptu Pen, now Saber Red Pepper Spray uh, slash Tear Gas, 
of course, cannot be marketed for the purpose of self-defense, must be marketed for the purpose of protection against wildlife. So, I repeat, Sabre Red can be purchased for the protection against wildlife and nothing more. That's all I'll say about that. And that's by legal definition, according to Canadian law. Now, this is my uh, little iOS or I i3s uh, O light light. This is 80 lumens in this little light. And you know, I know a lot of people are like, "Oh, you don't need a powerful flashlight and all this." Well, let me tell you something, man. These flashlights nowadays, you can get a through night, which is 120 lumens, runs on a AAA battery like this one, is minuscule it, it's tiny really it's incredibly tiny for the amount of power this thing puts out this is like a one of those large mag lights back in the day about five to eight of those i can't remember the exact number but those old mag lights were only like i don't know 15 lumens or something like that this thing is 80 lumens pardon the calluses on my hands that's from doing deadlifts <sighs> i know there's gonna be some jokes about that but uh, anyways, the old light uh, i3s, great little light, and uh, has a variety of settings. Has a strobe setting too. It's kind of hard to get work in there. It is, and so I mean, it could serve a tactical function. Though anything under 100 lumens, the tactical function sort of slips. If you really want tactical, you could go with the Nikkor P12 that I've demonstrated before one of my other videos, or you could go with this beast, the Eagle Tac 3500 lumen uh, Mega Killjoy flashlight that thing's a beast and a half that's one of the most powerful flashlights you can get in a compact form which could actually fit in a pocket not comfortably but it could so uh signaling equipment i'm just going to do this really quickly here this is the safety siren you know i would use this for signaling if there was some sort of uh you know issue i was having or you know, man down type shit. So here we go. Very loud. My eardrums are almost blowing from that. It's incredible how loud this thing is for how small and out of the way it is. Normally I wouldn't carry this on my person. It would be in my bag. But, you know, depending on the circumstances, I may get it ready, you know, to be used. Uh, this is the uh, T-Rain retractable lanyard. So I haven't really used this one per se. I have a, a smaller one. This is the medium size. It has, uh, I don't know, I, I suppose a few ounces of retraction pull, but it's very well made. It's made with uh, Kevlar string, I believe. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's really well made sort of tool. It's got a lot of strong, you know, tension to it. So, uh, and it's got a nice clip to it there also. So you could use this to clip any one of these devices so if I had to do some work which required me to have access to this tool a lot I could attach it to here and use it quite frequently once again that might be something that I would put on my uh, EDC bag as opposed to carrying it now I've mainly been carrying this in my keychain pocket uh, alongside the little mini knife because this doesn't have a locking knife now I've considered this is a Swiss champ by the way Swiss Champ multi-tool pretty much is more of a wilderness tool, I'd say. You know, it's got the magnifying glass on there. It's got a really deadly saw, a couple knives. None of them lock, unfortunately. And it's got the pen and all that. But the Leatherman Surge, I find, is just an all-around better, um, you know, I mean, it's a beefier, you know. It's something that you can use and not be afraid that you're going to break it type thing. It's got locking blades you know it's got a nice set of scissors on there um got a couple saws you know some pliers i mean it's just a, an all-around good you know multi-tool leatherman surge and uh, got that one on sale last year so uh, but the only problem is it's a lot heavier so that's why i haven't really decided yet on where i want to go with that i'm already lugging around my survival belt so you know it's kind of a pain in the ass to add that much more weight. Of course, a trusty lighter. I'm thinking of switching this out with something smaller. And that also doesn't stay on my person. I don't smoke. So, not anymore, thank God. This is a uh, stuff that goes in my wallet. So, this is a little multi-tool credit card thingy. 
Uh, you know, I'll be honest, I've never fucking used this thing, part of my language, but I should probably take it out, but it is kind of cool to have, you know, some redundancy in there. And uh, this thing is, you know, it, it's okay sharp. This is stainless steel, so they say it was only two bucks, believe it or not. And uh, it's got a bunch of, you know, functions there, big useless can opener thing. I mean, who uses can openers anymore? Not since the 1950s. But uh, there's other ways to open bottles. It's the last thing you're going to need in an emergency situation. This is the Ian Sinclair uh, credit card knife. How this works is holds out like that. You want to make sure you're not getting the fake. There's a video on YouTube. Guy talks about how to discern the fakes from the real ones. And they will sell fake ones online on legitimate websites like Amazon. So you still have to be careful. And they will have good ratings because lots of people on there don't know what the heck they're talking about. So, but you know what makes a, a nice inconspicuous sort of knife that you can carry around in your wallet. So if all else was lost and you just had your wallet, uh, this would be a, a decent cutting tool. Of course, it's not full tang. It is decently sturdy, but you know, it's nothing you're going to want to use for a lot of intense uh, work. But, uh, you know, it's cool. And apparently the company claims that this plastic, because I was sort of critical of the plastic at first, you know, I figured, well, how many times can you fold it before these things just sort of bend right off? But apparently the company says this polypropylene is rated to infinite amounts of bends. So you could even potentially use it in the afterlife. Just give you a close up there of it. So that's what it looks like. Anyways, uh, I've gone on way too long here. But uh, that's pretty much the EDC. Now there are uh, some other things you could throw in here. Uh, you could throw in the whole thermometer whistle type deal with the compass and you know the magnifying glass, this $5 thing from Koglin's. Of course, the uh, compass doesn't work anymore. I guess it kind of works, but not really. I don't know. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's dead. The fluid drained out of there or something. But, I mean, you could probably use that to, to make one if you had to. But uh, that's pretty much it. So, you know, the Canadian EDC, especially for winter, you know, it, you see a lot of videos on EDCs and bug out bags. And they're... There really isn't a one season, you know, an all season version of those things. It really is uh, something that needs to be changed every season. And for that particular reason, I'm going to be doing a winterized bug out bag video, uh, Canadian oriented, uh, coming up pretty soon. And I got a couple other projects on the way. Uh, I got like 10 projects underway. So, you know, I'm just constantly trying to develop in this prepping game and learning more things as time goes by and keep the comments coming and keep the feedback coming. I try to respond to all the comments. I definitely read all of them and I appreciate all the support and feedback thus far. And uh, so hopefully Canadian survivalists and preppers can become more prominent in the future and uh, start networking some more on this uh, fine fine medium of communication that we have before us. So thanks for watching, Canadian Prep Row. Just wanted to add one more thing to this EDC video, and I've done reviews on both of these items as well. I also carry around a Kevlar survival bracelet that I made, and a G-Shock shock resist solar powered uh, analog clock, analog and digital I guess. It is uh, does have a 10 year warranty. So that's just the warranty itself. So I'm presuming it'll last a lot longer than that. So there is time, you know, for potentially as long as, as long as I'm ticking, as long as the sun's there anyways. So that would be another useful tool in my EDC kit. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.